Hey, WCC family, this is Staff Pastor Ananda Carr here. Hi, y'all, this is Jasmine. During the pandemic, in the year of 2020 vision, each of us was faced with a choice. Our usual comforts and commutes were no longer available, and we all struggled to find community and stay connected in the new normal of the pandemic. Our praise and worship team was no exception. As we sought who we were in Christ and what to do in our individual walks, we had to come together as a community, challenge our old norms, and change in order to create a new collective voice in ministry. In May and July of 2022, we sat down to reflect on this time and how we not only cope with the challenges and necessary changes, but also allowed the pandemic to be a catalyst for growth. Using the backdrop of two team video projects, Back to Eden and Greater, we discussed how we chose to come together in unity around our collective purpose of praising and worshiping our God. It was not easy, but it was worth it. And we are thankful for all God did in and through us in the journey. We all continue to be in process with the Lord, but we thank God for this snapshot of what growth looks like and what it takes. Thank you for joining us for building relationship and fighting through in ministry. Why did you choose Greater? Um, Nina introduced me to the song like five years ago and we never sung it. And God pretty much put it back on my heart when we were in the pandemic trying to sort out music. And for my own personal testimony, like during the pandemic, um, I was cranky, I was miserable, and um, I don't know, I just wasn't so negative at that time. And within this song, the revelation with this song, uh, it let me know that I was so much into like what was going on instead of what God was saying. And in the first verse of the song, um, it says, um, Almighty Savior, uh, you never failed. Um, you have all power. And for that, for me, I had to like, in, the, in that time with the song, um, it resonated that I, I put so much power into the pandemic. I put so much power into my emotions. I put so much power, but then as I acknowledge where I was and I begin to say, okay, let me read God's word so I can be aligned with God's power. So I was like powerless because I was not in alignment with God's power. So that the song really hit, hit home for me when I began to sit back and just think about what state of mind I was in. What did you learn from this process? Well, for me, it was not fun, okay? I was irritated, I was bothered, I was frustrated, and I complained a lot to Nina. And thank God she had the Holy Spirit to set me straight um, because I wanted to give up, to be honest. Um, because I, like I said, I was in my head focused more so on my emotions and how I felt. And I did not pray. I did not, yeah, I was just trying to get it done and I didn't really want to do it. But again, having accountability, it helped me. And normally when you do something collaboratively, it's easier if you're all in the same room. And so we were all in different areas, different homes, um, so trying to just make sure that we did our part in our video and then DJ have to put it together and make sure that it ran smoothly and the timing was right. So I think that was challenging, but I think the fun part was um, being able to go outdoors. Mm -hmm. um, because a lot of the, yeah, a lot of the videos that we had done, we were inside. So being able to go, I did mine at the park. Um, so that was fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'd love to hear what DJ has to say about this one because, uh, like, a good chunk of the video near the end is like basically calling out those things, like um, to Nomi's point about, uh, you know 
certain things in the world having power or um, our feelings being um, impacted and our behavior being impacted by the world. We actually call those things out in the video. So um, Nina had this clip of the sky. It was super apocalyptic. It was that time when there was fires and it was like orange sky. And then he took that and then we found like stock footage of like things about the pandemic and just kind of other things like police brutality, all these things that were going on in the world that felt suffocating at the time, we called them out in the video. Uh, so being able to to convey the song is like God is greater than all these actual things and visually like bringing them to the light and overcoming them, um, I think was a beautiful element of the video that was unique to this one. I think for me, the challenging part was actually bringing the idea for the video to the team mm -hmm. and making it make sense because I struggle with that from time to time. So I have ideas, but putting it in front of people is what I struggle with. So when I came with the idea and it was pretty much like, okay, let's do it. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, okay. I'm like, I'm over here fighting myself for what? <laughs> but, um, but that was also the fun part, just actually being able um, to be a part of the production process because I had a chance to work not only with the singers in the group, but also with DJ as far as the production part of it, and also with Douglas in the um, the back end of it. So it was it was fun to be able to do something outside of what we normally do, and also being outside, like Renee said, being outside and in the elements with um, all the hay fever and everything else. But it was fun. Yeah, no, I definitely have to add on, piggyback off of what Jasmine said. I, I really enjoyed the process of making the video um, because when you're making when you're making something that deep, um, you're connecting with it differently um, because you're putting the pieces together. And so when I was connecting the pieces of the song to the stock footage, um, you hear how the song is talking about. Um, greater and how God is greater than the things that is going on in this world. And then especially during the pandemic, there was like a lot of fires happening. There was marches for several different reasons, mm -hmm. things like that. And just showing all that footage and then placing that on top of a song to say, God is still greater than all the things that are occurring in this world. It only shows proof how good God really is because we're still here today. Um, and we're literally a testimony of how good he is. I um, mean, yeah, sure, the video was really fun. It was exciting. I loved going out um, with each and every one of them to different places. Um, of course, I went to the park with Auntie to film that. That was awesome. Loved it with the kids and everything. Had to get them situated and all that. So that was that was wonderful. Went to downtown Oakland with Nomi and was performing an entire set in front of many crowds coming through in and out. So that was fantastic and then went to the backwoods of nowhere with Nina, um, where it looked like a fire recently <laughs> so we didn't know if that was like a healthy place to be or not so that was kind of interesting but all in all we had a good time so it was it was really fun doing it i enjoyed it <laughs> What verse in this song speaks to you concerning your relationship with Christ or relates to the teachings of this church? I mean, the song speaks for itself. I mean, it says God is greater than sickness. There's no power greater than God. And so when you, one of my things is when you come to see that and recognize that, mm -hmm. that's the first thing you have to do is recognize it and and acknowledge those things because sometimes we could be in a mundane stage in the ministry or in church and not know where we are um, within our spiritual space with God. And so um, this song essentially says, it's basically ministering to us and saying that, you know, God is greater than COVID-19. Mm -hmm. God is greater than these wildfires that are leaving people homeless. Mm -hmm. God is greater than the power of the enemy that's trying to dwell within our our world. Mm -hmm. And he left his spirit with inside inside of us. So we have that same power. 
um, to demonstrate to the world. Mm -hmm. And so we can't let our light be dim. We got to be shine bright. And so in order for us to get there, we have to have a relationship mm -hmm. with God so he can reveal to us what he, where he wants us to be in that. And so this song is basically saying when you acknowledge that God is greater, um, what you see is limitless. And the part that Nomi did, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other. That was a song that we used to do back in the day. So we are constantly speaking that. Um, so, and I mean, it pretty much just says God is higher than anything, no matter what's going on. Um, so that was the part that really, it was fun to be able to bring it back. Um, but also a reminder. I would say especially at this time because I believe all of us have went through some certain, um, I don't want to use shedding, but we have, um, in, in this whole time frame, we have learned to let some things go. Mm -hmm and take some things on for the better. Mm -hmm. And so we have grown individually and collectively in this process of having to depend on each other for, okay, who's going to have, are we going to have your part together? You're going to have your part together. This sounds a hot mess, let's redo it. And being open enough to say, okay, because there was times where I was like, I don't want to redo this again, I'm not doing it. And then somebody would call me and say, you need to redo it, and then I'll redo it. But being humble enough <laughs> to say, okay, I'm going to redo it. And um, just allowing God to use us um, was one of the biggest things in this whole process, was allowing God to use us mm -hmm. and not um, allowing the ball to drop because we're not able to meet like we normally would meet or because we're not we're not into it. We we got away from the part of just doing it just to get something done and doing it with the um the motive to please God. Yeah. How does that change how you serve? That's a good question. How you serve? Um, you serve no matter what. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what's going on. Mm -hmm. I think God never stops. Mm -hmm. And so I think our service should never stop. And I think that's what we learned. Like, we have to still have the praise and worship team go forward because our team is always moving and always, like, we can't not have praise and worship. Mm -hmm. So... It's just doing it no matter what and finding a way to make it happen. Yeah. I would even say, to add to that, allowing yourself to receive God to a level, to recognize that your service really is like a lifeline to many people. Mm -hmm. And to let go is to not just disappoint God or to step out, step into fear and away from faith, but to literally let go of people. Um, so, to, you know, when I think about the song Greater, I think about how everybody came together, how the, you know, going back to what Nina was saying about being willing, being open, being available to hear from God and allow God to work through you to connect to people. Um, opens the door for, because the song, this video was different in the way that creatively, it was not just about singing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it had to be more. And the heart of, I am looking to connect to people beyond just singing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, to those that may take it as in, you know, entertainment value, for us, in everything's ministry. Mm -hmm. From the cho every choice was combed over, considered, thoughtfully thought about, mm -hmm. um, discussed, mm -hmm. and in that spirit of one accord, you get this result. 
um, you know, like I said, only being out there during a time of extreme social, you know, unrest, walking around, you know, graffiti everywhere, businesses being broken in, and she's singing great at you know, church. Like, you know, that's nuts and beautiful and amazing that the pushback to those principalities that we're supposed to be fighting against was something of her just deciding, I'm going to go where I am mm -hmm. and sing. Nina creating what she created with DJ to go out to this space. Like, she chose, like, if you know Nina, she is particular about how she chooses things. That was chosen. Mm -hmm. That was purposeful. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just, oh, you know, okay, this, and of course, like this. No. Uh, Renee saying, okay, we can do this, this is what I have, this is what I can use and the kids can be over there, and we're gonna create this amazing thing mm -hmm. from what I have. Like, these moves are extreme faith moves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the song for me is not only are you hearing the lyrics, but the expression of the video is the manifestation of the lyrics. Mm -hmm. Touching in the green, God is greater. Mm -hmm. My circumstances will not win. Yeah. And just to add, like, within, like, this song, having us be there to serve each other with an accountability to say, hey, I got you when you are not, when your head is not all straight, where you, like, oh, um, you don't want to do it or you're feeling discouraged. Like, that love, that's what God gives us to, to give to each other, which is powerful, I feel, because we're serving, we're serving God's people, but we're also, like, saying, hey, I'm not at my best. How can how can you love on me better so I can then bring it? And that's why I really like felt within our ministry within the pandemic for me. And I'm grateful because again, I've never okay, I don't think I let you guys in to even feel that, but I'm saying I've really felt that this time <laughs> the, of the love and the and the encouragement to say, hey, you know, uh, we we are we are with you even though we're not living with you, but we got you. You know what I'm saying? To be understanding. And I think I believe that when people see that love um, with us as human beings, they can really see God loves because God is within us. So by us for, you know, loving on each other, checking in and stuff like that. That's the greater love that God gives us to give to each other than we can give to others. So, yeah. And to piggyback off of that, it's like we have to remember we're serving as we're serving um, others. We're also serving each other, even though we're on a team, we're still serving each other. Yes. And I think sometimes when you're in a team, you forget that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we all we all got our our issues. We do. We do. We and, uh, pray and give it to God. <laughs> like Nina got on my nerves, God, but God help me to love her. You know what I'm saying? Help me to be open and say, Hey, she loves me, God, but she she getting. You know, I, I'm, I'm bothered. I got an attitude. Okay, God, okay. I got to sit down and get my heart right. Okay, God. That's how it looks like. Yeah, that's how it looks like. I'm going to let y'all sit beside each other. <laughs> Just so recognize her. Yeah. <laughs> recognize that we all got our, our little things. And then this whole thing just brought this. I don't know about everyone else, but for me, and I know for Naomi, because I had to sit through it. Um, it's love. It's the love of this Jesus. time has revealed some things in us mm -hmm. individually that we had to go to the Father to ask to work with us on. Mm -hmm. yes. And so for me, I noticed like now I'm just like, okay, Lord, why? <laughs> Opposed to saying, you know what? <laughs> I'm just like, okay, Lord, what's something wrong with me? It can't be everybody else. Mm -hmm. And so I've learned some things about myself in this time because the press and the push and the pull and the everything else that went on during this time, not just the pandemic in itself, but it brought on a lot of other, it revealed a lot of people's, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Motives. Mm -hmm. And for me, it kind of, that's how I know it's the enemy, it kind of made me look at people differently because it revealed how deceptive people can be. Mm -hmm. um, even people that you thought that were so just 
men and women of valor just you thought they were you, you look at them because okay they they work well they have um they just they perceive to be such good people but this time frame has revealed a lot of things and people that will make you say people are something else Yes, and that's why you need to love God and to read your word and be praying for people. That is so important. Prayer is the answer. It's not only us, like, like we love, I mean, we love each other. We're working on it. We, 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 we love each other, it. but the good thing, we pray for each other and we, we say, hey, God, help me to love love them better. And what, what am I doing that I can do better for them and to listen and to text and stuff like that. So again, it's, it's still a work in progress. Not saying that we got it all figured out, but we want to do the work. So, yeah. Would you say communication is an important component of being part of the team? It is very important. Yes. Effective communication. Yes. 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 I would even go further and say learning how to be yes. an effective mm-hmm. Yes. Because mm-hmm. everybody yes. comes to a team and everybody has different definitions. Mm-hmm. But the team in and of itself will create a different, you will change teams, there will be a different dynamic. Mm-hmm. And you have to be willing to find out how you fit or how you need to learn how to effectively communicate in that space. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah, I mean, for me, that was huge. Like, okay, just because you're familiar or you think you understand this about how to talk and discuss or how things should be, that is not going, what's most important, getting the thing done or connecting with the person? Mm-hmm. And having to put yourself down, going back to some of the things that was said before, you got to come away from self to recognize that you are a part of the group mm-hmm. and that when you support that, you're taken care of as well. God makes sure everybody's going to be taken care of. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and of course, you know, first and foremost, like what Naomi keeps saying, you know, prayer. Mm-hmm. Um, to be able to hear, yep. to be able to understand, to have know, revelation. I'm stubborn. It's okay. Receive that. So. <laughs> and of course, you know, all day long, staff pastor calling everybody. Yes. Oh my God. Let's talk about that. Your flesh. No, <laughs> I understand. <laughs> Is there <laughs> Uh, and all I get it, and I'm sure. Yes. Exactly. When you define the word dynamics, is essentially it's a growth process. Yeah. And so I think when we take a word and we don't dissect it fully, mm-hmm. we don't fully understand what it entails. Yes. And so we've been growing. <laughs> we've been growing. <laughs> I would even say when you're in a group like this a prayer team, a praise and worship team a dance troupe because you're so close mm-hmm. it forces you to pray and, and be um, meditate on his word day and night yeah. you have to be, because the thing is you know we know that but when you're in a group and you're close the moments show up when you're not ready. So we come to church and we're ready for church. Right. We come to these big rehearsal even, and we're out okay, out do rehearsal, and I know how to go and throughout it's over. We got two hours, I gave you my two hours I'm out. But when a cat calls you and it's nine o'clock at night, randomly, or hey man, this thing is not going back to what you said. Can you do your it's nine o'clock? You want me to do a video again? I'm like I did my work, right? <laughs> no. We, the group says, the group. <laughs> and so, you know, it makes you now go, so I have to calm down. Mm-hmm. I have to refocus. Mm-hmm. I have to reconnect with God. If I, mm-hmm. Now, I said, this is what I, you know, God, this is what you're doing in my life right now. All right, I submit to your will. Okay. And so, like, groups like this, you know, put you in a space to where you have to meditate on his word day and night, mm-hmm. which is a great thing. Jasmine, being the newest member, what was it like for you joining right before the pandemic? Yeah, it's a it's a challenge because I mean, musically, everybody already knows where people are. Like, 
we didn't know we could dovetail off each other without really without going like without fully knowing the song because everybody knows each other's voice so that part was hard to get used to and then me learning my own voice is difficult and then uh everybody has tendencies that like don't show up all the time when i just know them in church you know so like uh i mean Yes, I've spent time in other ministries with, like, DJ and staff pastor and, you know, do a service thing and, like, that was a couple times. Like, you know, it's like, this, this, this group was different. It's, uh, it's, uh, I don't know. It's, it's, there's, things, there's things behind the scenes that um, just people don't know. But, I mean, that, that's what happens. But that's what happens when you're part of a team and you get to know people's personalities more, so you get to hang out with them more. And um, I was telling you the other day um, about just, like, how I love that we have godly community, like being able to, like, worship together, being able to share, being able to share gospel and, like, Christian music with people, to me, is really, like, fantastic. Because, like, none of my friends really listen to the stuff that I listen to because, you know, a lot of us have an R&B kind of background type thing. Mm-hmm. But we do try to play Prince sometimes. Church, anyway. <laughs> so we all kind of have it. But then for me, it's like, I know how music sometimes can be a good or bad thing for me. And it might just sweat. Like, it pulls me to other directions. And so to be able to refine this gift and actually um, see God through it in something that I'm already passionate about has been a true blessing. And that's what kind of is keeping me... Uh, I guess driven towards the whole uh, throughout the whole thing, and then everybody's been really supportive. I mean, and then, you know, they tell me I need to work on stuff, and that's good, and I appreciate it because don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because one time I was trying to see that song, they're like, "Oh no, that's a good idea." Um, but you know what? It's a process, <laughs> and we gonna keep working on it. Um, but I think one thing is that I I tend to overthink and I stay in my head and all this other stuff. Um, but I think. Um, Building trust and having the comfort to share with people or to be vulnerable Mm -hmm. or to even uh, not have it all together because I feel like oftentimes I'm the one in a group that has to have it all together in a lot of my friend groups and other social life stuff. So, like, to be able to just come as I am and not have to pretty it up all the time Mm -hmm. um, has been great, too. So, Nina and Naomi, going in and coming out of the pandemic, where was your relationship? Oh my God, I'm gonna tell you first, because I, you know, I, this is the truth. No, this is the truth, truth. No, okay. No, so um, let's see, I brought Nina to um, WCC like, you, you know, you remember it's the been year? About 30 years. 100 years. Okay, there, there you have it, you know what I'm saying? So we came in together. And like, you know, in the back, we're sitting in the back, you know, and just doing our thing, coming in late. Did we come in late? Thumbs up? Came yeah, in we late. came in late. And, you know, we right just... Right in the middle of pastor's message. Right. It was good. Hey, now. But anyway, the, <laughs> but we missed everything else. But okay, we, we, we better now. Hey, now. Um, so literally, uh, <laughs> within like, uh, we were roommates too. And I was a type of person where I... I isolated, you know, and I kept to myself. Nina's more so she in your face and want to talk and be like, what's going on? And I'm like, nothing. I don't have nothing to say, you know. And, uh, you know, it was rough because I kind of, like, shut down the communication. And she used to ask me stuff, and I'd be like, I'm not going to answer. And I didn't. And she just wanted to know where I was and literally... um, uh, my dad was in some situations, and uh, I was he was homeless. I was trying to figure that out, and literally, um, I was like Nina. Uh, I didn't give her a, a notice, and I didn't communicate with her well. Literally, I, I, I kind of shut down, and you know, she felt you know like she's like, what happened, you know? And literally, I didn't explain the process of my dad's situation because I didn't know at that time how to explain it. And it was just a lot. So literally, we were no longer friends um, Like while I was taking care of my father. And literally, I knew her for like 15 years, 20 years. I mean, I knew her a long time. Um, and uh, like literally, um, we used to come to church, and we were not talking. We were not cool. Um, and it was m- from my own being, my own self not communicating and not you know, letting her know what's up. And, um, and you were on the worship team together at this time? <laughs> yes, we were. 
We were, and it was awkward. Not in my eyes. Oh, it was. I don't see her. Oh, I'm just kidding. Seriously. <laughs> I mean, but it was my fault, you know. Um, but we weren't like, like literally, we were going to the. We was in church, but we were not friends, and. And I blame myself and literally I was taking care of my dad and literally hooked up with staff pastor in this process too. And I was just, uh, with that pastor was not only helping me with my father, but also helping me to, to heal because I was like, I'm not going to ever be friends with Nina. She hates my guts. It was my fault. And literally it was like that happened for years. And even after I apologized, I thought that would have done it. Like, I apologize. She should come back willingly and be okay. And she wasn't okay. Like literally, she said, she she did not trust me. And uh, she said, of course, within her having God, you know, she had to forgive. And that was where it, it stayed. And we wouldn't be cool. Maybe you can take over now. But gosh. <laughs> I don't think you done. Yeah, I'm done. Go ahead. Are you done? Yeah, go ahead. Um. That was, uh, we were friends. I'm just going to put it in a nutshell. We were friends, went through a little phase where we didn't communicate with each other. And that goes back to what we were saying. How do you have being a team and it's cohesive and um, it just goes back to a relationship. Mm -hmm. And so I think people don't realize what relationship means and what it is. Mm -hmm. um, and relationships should be the same across the board. We're supposed to love people, right? Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we're working on loving people, but you're working on it. Mm -hmm. So that's a step towards it. Um, but for me and Naomi, we were in ministry together, and um, yeah, I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. I don't know how she felt, but I felt it. <laughs> I like her. Um, that was hard for me. But then it got to a point where it was just like I was just I wouldn't say angry, it was more hurt. Mm -hmm. And so in the hurt, um, that's what I operated in. And that ain't God, right? Mm -hmm. We all know that's not God. We don't operate in hurt. Especially when you're ministry with somebody that um you once confided in. Mm -hmm. And so that was the, the hurtful part. Um, and also in that same time frame that we um, decided not to be friends, I was also going through some things. And so this was a season for me where I was essentially, sh I don't wanna say shedding dead weight, but I'll say that for lack of better words. Mm -hmm. And um, the pruning, it was prune. It was a pruning phase for me. And so, um, I learned a lot about myself and I don't typically let a lot of people in. I got a few people. I only got a few people. <laughs> um, and I've been like that since I was younger. Like I can love people. I never had the heart to dislike people, but I disliked Naomi. Mm -hmm. It wasn't her per se. It was her actions. Mm -hmm. So I disliked her actions for about four years, four and a half years. It was about that. And it wasn't until, like, I would say after four years, somebody, there was a moment that I shared with somebody and only she knew about it. And me and her would laugh. We still laugh about it to this day. And so in that moment, four years later, it was like, I actually missed her today. I'm like, wow, it took four years. Um, I missed her every day. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I'm the one that I'd be, I'd be lying if I said But um, the pandemic essentially just opened the doors for our relationship to be, um, I don't know, rekindled? Restored. Yeah. Restored. Um, and where we are in a different place, um, spiritually, mm -hmm. emotionally, yeah. and physically to a certain extent. I'm trying to get back. But um, <laughs> yes, but God, it had to be God because it sure wasn't me. It sure wasn't. It was not me. Not um, me. Were you restored or made new? 
the relationship is different now. So I guess you would say made new. Yeah. Definitely. Because from the outside looking in, I, I remember people asking me about you guys. And so, they good? Because we was like the scene. And I'm screaming, you know, one accord from the thing. And folks, you know, who are you looking at? I'm like, I turn around, I'm like, yeah. Because <laughs> everybody knows y'all's the sisters, right? And so, you know, the pandemic, because you guys evolved as women in God, like, you know, asking on me about prayer or the youth and see what happened. <laughs> you know, ask Nina about leadership and God's excellence and you know, oh, a plethora of things and see what happened. Um, that wasn't there before. It was it was looking and searching and, and, and you know, um, wanting to become. But now, through the pandemic, God provided a space for you guys to just um, like you said, there was a pruning. There was a, a time of, yeah, and you know, the times. To be honest, I just I was like, should I ask? Should I leave it alone? Might not. Like you know what? I think she and God. Are, like they got it. She might go home. Head. Head. <laughs> so, you know, because I mean, you do. You get because, like I said, because I'm speaking about us to people for the sake of people recognizing. The work. Exactly. And so sometimes there are some real, and we kind of do this vague thing, but we just talk about a real thing. Mm -hmm. um, it can be very vague, and if you're not in it, you don't know how, and unless you have your own thing, then you can touch and agree. But for those that don't know, or those that do want to, you know, praise team or any team, uh, essentially, even as a married man, even marriage, like it's like you got to consider like what does it mean to be a part of the communication all, all these different things um, what what do you do when something breaks down yeah. in God how do you lean on God's word how do you what does that you know pray day and okay so what am I looking for when I see that I'm going to get something back like um, they're talking about it yeah. Sometimes you just need that five heartbeats moment where you're taking each other's sleeves off. <laughs> I mean, you do. I, I, I believe that a true relationship has to have some sort of, some sort of a... Friction. Yeah, friction. Mm -hmm. Because that's how you learn how to love each other. Mm -hmm. and, and show and, desire. Exactly. There you go. Mm -hmm. And then also I want to add, like, even though Nina disliked me, a whole bunch like we did not move like Nina could have left a long time ago went to another church and whatever I could have felt so bad in my you know me hurting her I could have left too and then nobody would have known but because we were Nina was rooted within her accountability I was rooted in my accountability and again God does not work on our emotions we are God works within our faith and then because of we allowing God to work within us God did what he does best. So it's like when when we have this moment where we get caught up in like getting offended and all this stuff, you have to be still because God is working on you as an individual. You can't just be like, oh, okay, somebody says something bad. Okay, well, just stay put. Get, hook up with somebody that, you know, know more in you and, and Jesus. And so, because literally me hooking up with that pastor, I saw a lot of ugliness within myself, but then just to know that Sad pastors always say, God loves both of y'all. I was like, he does. Oh, my God. How can you say that? And again, this is real stuff. Like, literally, I was crying. Because I was like, I could not believe that God still loved me. And I hurt his child, just Nina. You know, I'm his child, too. But I just felt that I did so bad. I mean, you know, I hurt her. I hurt a person that I said I loved. And I did. It wasn't. It doesn't matter what I did, what I said. It just wasn't. It wasn't enough. So it's like God had to. God did it, to be honest. And that's why when I look at her and we do praise and worship, it's like I get hyped because this was not a thing like we literally was not cool you know what I'm saying so like I didn't I never knew that this was possible to me it's a miracle to for me you know what I'm saying <laughs> if you ask me but anyway because uh, you don't know her you know what I'm saying but um, okay okay love I'm gonna tell you but I'm just <laughs> 
Well, as unsaid, I think like all relationships are built on like unspoken agreements. Mm -hmm. We just gonna have a plug for emotional intelligence real quick. And a lot of times people get offended because somebody did something that broke the agreement that they had in their head mm -hmm. or it triggered something in them that they hadn't really resolved, but it came up in a way that they weren't expecting. Mm -hmm. And so being open enough with yourself yeah. to communicate that out to the person that offended you as opposed to shutting down or internalizing mm -hmm. is key to taking your relationship with that person to the next level. Yeah. Some people are seasonal. Some people you do need to have boundaries around, but it kind of goes back to what Pastor and First Lady were saying about like, I was at the basement one time. And then um, I think we had a kingdom building um, where the web, like, uh, who was talking mm -hmm. about the, like, the cycles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was, like, Chris, Chris, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Michelle. Chris and Michelle were doing, like, cycles and, like, just habits and, like, all these things, like, have, it's not about the habit. It's about the underlying thing that you haven't dealt with. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's brought out when you're in communication or in community or in relationship with other people. And I think we all need to have the courage to actually say what the thing was, even if we can't find words for it, try to explore it and get to the heart of it and have an accountability partner to help you explore it. Yeah. And at the end of the day, we all have that one-to-one -one communication with God where you just need to ask, like, reveal to me what is actually going on and bring it to light so that I can overcome it. Oh, um, and then we can all just become more enriched as a group. Would you say serving in ministry unveils some triggers? Mm. Yes. Yes. I've been delivered. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think, and I mean, yeah. Especially now that the church is in a space to where service is something that we're leaning towards, you know, meeting folks and folks coming back to church and all that. If you really want to get close with God, sir. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it, it's, it's, it's an, it, it happens, and it's actually the thing, most folks, especially in Oakland, I ain't trying to have folks in my business. Mm -hmm. I, ain't to, I ain't trying to have, I don't need folks. I, 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 <laughs> but it's like, dude, you have no idea. You're, 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 you will, you're speaking to something, but you're not actually in a faith walk right. because you're not connected to God's will, mm -hmm. not just for your life, but the, your community. Right. And by activating yourself in your community, not just triggers, but also parts of yourself you didn't know existed. Yeah. Like there's there's so much benefit in, in being a, a servant. Mm -hmm. There's so much uh, blessing in being a servant. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is, it's, it's, it's Exposed, you expose yourself to a certain degree. Yeah. And yes, you can get tired and burnt out and all that. But really what's being burnt out is the the, the lesser part of you. Mm -hmm. The part of you that talks, you know, the enemy basically. Mm -hmm. The enemy will sit and convince you that you what you're not, what you, and you'll try to say, oh, and as you're shifting from fear to faith, mm -hmm. Which is a process, mm -hmm. you know. You're you're learning how to get rid of that anxiety. Mm -hmm. You're learning how to get rid of old habits. Mm -hmm. um, without people around you that are believers and believers that are moving as well, mm -hmm. it is difficult to truly transition into a space of faith, faith-led life. Because you'll never have somebody who is outside of your body that you know you can trust. Going back to staff pastor calling. You will hear things you do not want to hear. Things you know. Things that you don't want to talk about. Mm -hmm. And when you know the person comes in love. Yeah. But they're saying the thing that feel that before was a triggering, hurtful thing. Mm -hmm. There's this weird glitch that happens within you. It's like, I know this person is for me, mm -hmm. but my body is trying to respond like it's an attack. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in good. church, we do that all the time. Mm -hmm. And good. it's the reason why so many saints don't want to fool with the church. Yeah. Um, because it's like last time mm -hmm. I was triggered. Mm -hmm. Meaning, you know, God sent the person, but maybe your trust level with that person wasn't where it needed to be. Mm -hmm. 
but the assignment was still important. Yeah. So the trust wasn't there, so you didn't hear, but the assignment was still there. Mm-hmm. And that's what, you know, faith to faith, you know, that's how we're supposed to live from faith to faith. God gives us these assignments, these growth assignments. And to miss those assignments or to even abort the process together is a travesty. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, service promotes growth. It's fertilizer. All right, WCC, I hope uh, that video blessed you and that there's something that you can take back uh, and discuss among your own ministries. And stay tuned for the next episode. God bless you.